in this next section, I want to just briefly show you how you can choose from all of the hundreds of different fancy transitions that are available on the TriCaster if you decide you want to add a little pizzazz to your program here. Again, uh, we mentioned in the previous section that um, the transition button here on the switcher is where you actually uh, can choose the fancier transitions that you want to switch between. But uh, the TriCaster lets you choose from hundreds of those and you can load up up to, up to eight of those in a, in a collection of presets. To do that, I'm going to move to the monitor over on the left hand side here and use the mouse. This little section right in here actually is where we choose the kind of transitions that we want to use. It also gives us other important information, like it shows us what, uh, what camera is currently on program. The little icon here gives us a little representation of what the transition is going to look like, the one that's selected currently, and then the time length of the transition, how fast or how slow it's going to happen, is selected here as well. You can adjust that with the mouse as well as that knob that I showed you previously. But in order to change the transitions, if I just want to see what I have available, I can click on the little picture here that shows you what the transition is going to look like. And you can see a little window that's popped up here that has nine squares in it. The first one of those is always going to be a fade. It's always, you're gonna, they assume that you're going to want to be able to use a fade all the time, so they're always going to have one of those available for you to choose from. The others here, though, can be, can be filled with whatever kinds of transitions you want. The little icons here kind of give you a picture representation of what the transition is going to look like, and you can load them in in whatever order you, that you want. In order to do that, once I pop up that little menu, so I'm going to click on the little picture again, and then if I hover over any one of the, the nine little squares here, remember you can't change number one, so I'm going to hover over space number two, slot number two, and when I hover over it with the mouse, you can see the little white plus sign appears in a circle there. If I click on that, it pops open a menu, which is all the different choices of transitions that you have. The category on the left-hand side over here are the different kind of subcategories of transitions that you have available. I can scroll up and down this list with a little scroll bar on the side, but if I choose one here, it shows me several different variations of that kind of transition over here. As I scroll down the screen, you can see that sometimes there are dozens of those. Occasionally, there may be just a few of them, depending on which subcategory you choose. So if I want to load up one of these from the category here that says blinds, you can see that these are sort of horizontal versions of what looks sort of like Venetian blinds, or they have diagonal versions uh, slanting to the right or slanting to the left, or they have vertical versions of those. If we scroll down below, they also have some of those that have a softer edge on the transition as you go between them. So you can see that there's a bunch of choices just in this one subcategory. If I double click on one of these, or single click on it, and then click the OK button in the lower corner, It'll now assign that transition to that particular slot. So let me repeat that here. I'll go to the third slot here, hover over the little plus sign, and then I can choose any one of these categories. Again, there are literally hundreds of these that you can choose from. They're all kind of grouped together by the, their basic style. So this one that says clock, the transition is similar to like the hands of a clock turning as it does the transition across the screen here. In fact, let me demonstrate one of those for you here. I'll double click on that to load it in, and now when we cue that transition, you'll see that kind of little spinning clock effect like you can see in the small monitor up at the top of the screen. So I'll click on that again to bring up my, my collection, and now let's say that I want to load something a little more complicated in down here. If I scroll down below, there are some fancier fades, for example, and I won't go through all of these because, again, there are hundreds of them that you can choose from, but it's fun to go and look through some of the different shapes and fancier transitions they have. And then the really fancy ones are down here at the bottom. There's a collection here that says animation stores, and these are far more elaborate kinds of transitions. You see these colored pictures instead of the kind of single color ones that you were seeing before. So if I choose one of these and then click on it or double click on it to assign it to that, now this transition is like a shutter opening and closing on a camera. And again, there are just hundreds of those fancier transitions you can choose from. I'll load up a couple of them here so that you can see them. So they have explosions and um, guitars flying across the screen. If you're doing a, a, a music show or something like that where you want to have a little bit fancier transition that you can use in your program, the speed of those is also adjustable in the same way the, that we adjusted the speed earlier. So here you have a laptop that closes up and flies off the screen to make the change. 
There's even, if you should be needing it ever, the alien hand that, that comes in and grabs your picture and snatches it away like that. Now all of these transitions can also be reversed, meaning that in the same little section here, there's in that little pop-up menu where you can choose from a slow, medium, or fast speed, you also have an item there that says reverse. So now it'll make the same transition happen, but it'll go the other way. So the, the alien will put the picture back that he pulled off the screen before. Or if you've chosen one that has a direction of some sort that moves from left to right on the screen or right to left on the screen, you can reverse the direction of that. So in one way, the, the guitar flies across the screen backwards like that. If I change this to reverse or turn off the reverse, now it'll fly the other direction. There's a third mode in there called ping pong, which will actually let you make it go a different direction each time you do it. So the first time it'll go forward, the next time it'll go backwards. And if I change the speed, I can choose a faster version of that same transition if you want as well. So those are some of the ways that you can choose between many of the hundreds of different cool transitions that are available in the TriCaster. Let me insert a, little, insert a little editorial comment here. Cuts and fades are pretty standard in programs and you see them used a lot, but these fancier transitions can actually be distracting if you use them too much. So I like to think of them as being an important transition point in the program, like you're going from segment one to segment two of your show, or you're going from live action to a pre-recorded video. Um, it's, it's useful then to use those kinds of fancier transitions as a way of saying, here's something different than what you've been seeing before. But remember, probably most of your transitions should be cuts and fades.